Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the sum to infinity of a geometric series. Now, if we take a geometric series, something like this, the first term is a, and we multiply the first term by a constant ratio called r, then the second term would be ar, and then the third term would be ar squared, the fourth term ar cubed, and so on, and so the nth term would be ar to the power m minus 1. And if we add these terms up, then we often call this the sum of the first n terms, Sn. Now in an earlier tutorial I showed you that this sum was equal to a times all of 1 minus r to the power n, all over 1 minus r. So, if I had a series something like this, where we had the first term was 12, and I chose to multiply each term by a common ratio of a half, then the next term would be 12 times a half, which is 6. The next term would be 6 times a half, which would be 3. And 3 times a half, which would be 1 and a half, or 3 over 2, and so on. So then the next term would be 3 over 2 times a half, which would be 3 quarters. And so it'd have a series something like this. And if we were to add these up. Let's just say we've got s, the sum of these terms, just generally. Let's have a look at what happens if we were to say sum the first 10 terms. s10 would be 12, a, multiplied by 1 minus the common ratio, a half, to the power 10, all divided by 1 minus the common ratio, 1 minus a half. And if we were to work this out, let's just get a calculator up and we'll see what we get. Let's start with the half to the power 10. So we'd have 0.5 to the power 10. All right, let's see what that is. 1 over 1024, or as a decimal, quite small. 0 0.000976562. All right, so we'll do. 1 minus this answer, OK, so we'll do 1 minus that answer. What does that equal? 1023 over 1024, or as a decimal, 0 0.9902, and so on. So then we've got to multiply this by the 12 and divide by a half. So if we multiply this by 12, OK, and then divide by a half, divide by 0.5, what do we get? Well, as an exact fraction, we get that, or as a decimal, we get 23.9765. So let's just put that in then, 23.9765, and so on. Now, do you remember that when we did half to the power 10, we got quite a small number? Let's see what happens if we take that 0.5, let's put it down again, 0.5, but not look at, say, the first 10 terms, but say 50 terms. Then this would be half to the power 50, 0.5 then to the power 50. Let's see what we get this time. Whoa, quite a small number. 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, lots of noughts, 15 zeros in fact, then 8817 and so on. A number that is tending towards zero. And if we were to do 1 minus that answer, what do we get? Well, the calculator can't cope with it. It just shows it as 1. In fact, it's going to be a 0 0.999 value. So that was just really after 50 terms. This term here would go to virtually 0. So 1 minus 0 just leaves us with 1. And so you're going to get 12 divided by a half, which is 24. So the calculator is showing us that the sum of the first 50 terms, which would have been 12 times 1 minus a half to the power 50, okay, all over 1 minus a half, it's telling us that this would be 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, 12 times 1 is 12, divided by half is 24. All right? So, what does this suggest? Well, this common ratio here, r, 
if r is any number between minus 1 and 1, so we'll just type in a value for r into the calculator, like 0.75 for instance, that's a number between minus 1 and 1, and we raise that to a big power, let's just say 50, let's see what we get. We get a very small number. What happens if we do 0.75 not to the power 50, but say to the power 100? What do we get now? Still an even smaller number. Let's do 0.75 to the power 500. Look at this. Much smaller still. 0.75 to the power 1000. What do you think we're going to get? zero. We know it's not exactly zero, but the calculator has to display zero. So what are we saying? Well, what this leads to is that if the common ratio lies between minus one and one, then we know that if n is large, okay, the sum for large numbers, we, we just generally know, is going to be a times 1 minus r to the power n all over 1 minus r. That's what it's going to be generally, but if n is large, this quantity is going to tend to 0, as n tends to infinity. So what this leads on to us saying is that the sum to infinity will be a times essentially 1 minus 0. Well, 1 minus 0 is 1, a times 1 is just a, and it's going to be all over 1 minus r. So going back to this particular summation here, you can see that if we were to put large numbers through sum to infinity, according to this formula, would be a, 12, all over 1 minus a half. 12 divided by a half is 24. So the sum to infinity would tend to 24. Okay, so I hope you've been able to follow that. What you need to do is remember this particular formula, okay, but it's only true if the common ratio lies between minus 1 and 1. Alright? Okay, so that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.